Hello, everybody. Drew here with the Drew Network. It's uh, another morning cup of coffee conversation with Drew. And uh, boy, has it been a hell of a hell of a day these past 12 hours, man. I guess 18 hours. It's one of those days where you still alive, still here. Um, so I thought I would take a break and film this video. Um, it's critical that if you're getting started and beginning with lenses, it's critical that you watch part one and then part two and then this. Uh, this is not meant to be the starting place for this little series. Uh, hopefully this little series is halfway useful to some people. From the amazing, warm, kind comments that have been written, I would certainly be left with that impression that this has been helpful to some people. And I thank each and every one of you who wrote those nice, nice comments. Thank you. Um, in theory, part four of this will be answering questions. Uh, so if you have a question about being introduced to lenses, uh, go ahead and write it in this comment section or send me a private message if it's a long question. And if there are questions, number one, and if they're relevant, uh, then I will answer them in a part four. If there are no questions or they're all from the planet Mars, then there will be no part four. Um, basically, the thing to keep in mind with any questions you might have is this is an introduction to lenses. It's not an introduction on how to use lenses. And there's actually a huge distinction there. So in part one, we covered uh, two things. Uh, number one, uh, the, the concept that you buy into lens systems. You buy camera bodies to go along with your lens collection, um, not the other way around. And as I tried to emphasize many times in the beginning of part one, it's all about the lenses. That, that really cannot be overemphasized, the importance of that. Uh, number two, uh, I covered what in part? Uh, what the hell did I cover in part two? Well, hello there. This is Edward. Edward is a very, very nice fellow. Um, what the hell did I cover in the second thing? Secondly, I covered... Uh, the difference between prime lenses and variable focal length lenses. Um, there's a huge difference, and it can't, again, it can't be overemphasized. Uh, there are situations where variable focal length lenses are required. For example, if you're an event photographer, so like you're a guy doing weddings, and, uh, and you're running around the room and you need to cr cram into this corner and, and sit there with a group of people, three people, and say, smile and take a picture. And then 10 seconds later, you need to be in another part of the room taking a picture of 12 people. Uh, in a situation like that, you may not have time to be changing prime lenses on your camera bodies. So that's a situation where a pro will use a variable focal length lens, but as followed up on in part two, it's not going to be a super zoom lens for variable focal length. It's going to be a um, 17 to 35, you know, something a, a reasonable length where the distortion amount is quite a bit less than some super zoom. Uh, secondly, a serious pro who is doing that will probably have two or three camera bodies strapped around their neck, each one with a different lens attached to it. So they may have a prime lens on, on one, like a 35 or a 50 millimeter on one cam camera body, then a 70 to 200 on a second camera body, uh, then like a 17 to 35 on a third camera body. In other words, there are situations where pros are required to use a variable focal length lens. On the other hand, if you're a documentary film producer uh, or if you're producing an independent feature film, where you are in control of the situation and you can move the camera around and move the setup around and tell people to stand here and move that light there. If you're in control of the situation, there is no excuse, uh, none whatsoever, to be not using a prime lens, period. Uh, if you are in control of the situation, prime lenses are dramatically better than variable focal length anything. Uh, in part two, we covered, uh, number one, what are the meanings of focal length, the general introduction, the memory association was that 50% uh, is right in the middle, and 50 millimeter is a normal lens, right smack in the middle. It's not wide, it's not telephoto. Uh, the further down you go from 50 millimeter, the wider the picture gets. 
So uh, a 35 millimeter is wider than a 50. Uh, a standard, A standard for a wide angle lens is 28 millimeter. 24 millimeter is even wider. Uh, lenses that go beneath 24 millimeter, again, in the 35 millimeter, full frame 35 millimeter equivalent. That's what we're talking about here. Uh, lenses that go beneath uh, 24 millimeter, that starts to get into the weird wide type stuff. Um, so in any event, beyond 50 millimeter is telephoto. Uh, if you're a news photographer uh, and you can't get close to your subject, then you want a 300 millimeter lens. Um, you know, some of these, they, they have more than that lenses, but, but anyway. Uh, a, a typical consumer uh, zoom lens would be a 70 to 200 millimeter. Then there are expensive pro versions too. Um, uh, so, so uh, you know, a 200 millimeter lens, that's again if, if you're 25 feet across a room taking pictures. Um, so uh, that's what we covered then. Now this is part three, and I've been trying to think of what we need to cover to kind of tie up this conversation at, to end here in part three and to make it a meaningful introduction for beginners. And basically what I'm coming up with is that what we want to cover are the fundamentals of lens formats, uh, lens mount types. Um, now this is not going to be a lecture telling you, listing to you the different kinds of lens formats, uh, the different kinds of lenses that can mount on other, on camera bodies. Uh, what it is going to be is a general introduction to the, to concepts. And here it goes. Uh, modern lenses, say from the mid to late 1980s on, modern lenses, uh, have electronically controlled elements to them. Autofocus, for example, that's, that's an electronic stuff going on. Motors in the lenses, uh, there are exceptions to that. Sometimes the motors are in the camera body. But the point is, is that modern lenses have electronically controlled elements to them. Uh, exposure metering concepts, uh, some of the newer ones within the past, say, decade, now have uh, uh, image stabilization, which is a powered camera, which is a powered function. Um, so there, there are various, um, in modern lenses, you have uh, electronically controlled elements. Canon EF lenses, which are the newest one, EF and EFS lenses. There's uh, a newer one now for the um, mirrorless Canons. I think it's M, but that could be wrong. I don't, I, I don't really know. So 40 something, 35 millimeter equivalent. Anyway. Um, so uh, Nikon G lenses, those are the newest ones from Nikon, also DX, those are all, you know, electronically controlled by the camera. Uh, all the micro four-thirds lenses, those are electronically controlled by the camera. Um, older lenses, say from the 1980s back, mid-1980s back, uh, aren't, they have no electronic elements to them. They are beautiful pieces of, of glass with, you know, m beautiful mechanical optics like this. Uh, this is a, I don't know if you can see it in the picture. Uh, this is a uh, Nikon AIS lens. This one, this one is actually from 1993, uh, but uh, which, because they still make some of these old manual focus lenses. But these lenses uh, go back, you know, to the 1950s, late 1950s. I mean, all, all, every Nikon lens made from 1958 on will mount on a modern lens. But they have n on a modern camera body or a modern adapter to another camera. But older lenses have no electronic controls. That's the point here. Older lenses have a dial on the body that you can turn that controls the iris. That's called manual iris control, manual aperture control, either one of those two. Um, manual control of the iris. Um, so older lenses have no electronic controls. Newer lenses have electronic controls. For newer lenses, and here's kind of the really big point of this now, for newer lenses, if you have a, a Canon 50 millimeter f1.4 EF lens, which is electronically controlled by the camera, you can only mount that on a Canon camera body. A modern Nikon G lens uh, that is electronically controlled by the, by the camera, you can only mount that on a modern Nikon camera body. 
uh, micro four-thirds lenses that are made by either Olympus or Panasonic that have all sorts of electronic stuff going on in them. Um, they can only be mounted on uh, cameras by Panasonic or Olympus micro four-thirds camera bodies. Um, so if you need autofocus, uh, then you need a modern lens with a matching modern body. I cannot buy a modern Nikon G lens and stick it on a modern Canon uh, body with an EF mount and then expect it to autofocus. That doesn't happen. Uh, now, you say to me, well, Drew, I, I've been going through DVX user and there are some big names there and they tell me autofocus is for dummies and consumers and I'm a pro or I'm going to become one and so therefore I don't need uh, autofocus. And the answer to that is, is not, your point is not nonsense, but the people on DVX user who tell you this stuff, the response is nonsense. Uh, modern autofocus, uh, there, there are different variations of modern autofocus. Um, there is uh, uh, the consumer autofocus where you just point the camera body at something and then let the camera decide what to focus on and then take the, damn, take the picture. Uh, then there is pro autofocus, which means the professional is in control of what the camera is autofocusing on. Uh, manually selected autofocus points. And this is a, a absolutely goes to the core of modern photography, especially if you're doing events, uh, any kind of thing where you need to respond quickly. Uh, if you're doing a fashion shoot with models, these models are moving all over the place. Um, uh, and if you sit there and tell them, stand still, freeze, then, then it's an issue for other reasons that I won't get into. Um, so modern autofocus that is controlled by the photographer is necessary for so many different purposes in modern photography. Um, and that's where then you must have uh, a, a camera, a, a lens that matches the mount of the camera body exactly. So you would buy Canon lenses um, and then to go along with your Canon lenses, you would buy Canon bodies, Canon camera bodies. Now we're going to go back to the old lenses. The old lenses that have, that have no electronics in them. This. This is an old not Nikon lens that has no electronics in it. This is a, uh, what is, is this an 85 f2? No. No, that's the 28 f2.8. Um... I'm trying to find an old Canon lens, an old Nikkor lens. Okay, this is the 85 f2. This is also, by its serial number, approximately from the late 80s or early 90s. Um, I, I would hold it up and you see those shots where you look at someone's eye, but that's not going to show up in this. Um, because the older classic lenses have no electronic controls. Because you can manually control the aperture uh, from the lens itself. You can turn the dial and you can open the iris and close the iris from the lens itself. Because there are no electronic controls, a large number of these older classic lenses can be mounted on modern camera bodies. Uh, that means that your camera will not be able to have electronic controls of stuff. You're not going to be able to turn a dial on your camera body to close or open the iris. But you can uh, turn and open the iris from the lens itself. Uh, therefore, this is a lens that you can use on a modern camera body. Uh, I've used this lens on a 7D. I've used this lens on a 5D Mark II. Uh, a good leading vice president in the Drew Network has one of these lenses. He's used quite extensively on a 5D Mark III. Um, and that is where you can do things like buy used lenses from, a third, from another manufacturer and mount them on a modern camera body with an adapter. An adapter is something that you mount to the base of the old classic lens 
and then you mount the adapter to the camera. So it goes camera body, adapter, lens. Um, there are all sorts of specifics. Uh, certain lenses that will and won't mount on, you know, by an adapter. So you need to research this stuff. There is not an adapter for every classic lens to every modern camera body. Um, but this is a situation where, the, and obviously no electronic controls, no autofocus, no image stabilization, uh, no metering connection with the camera other than, other than what the sensor sees through the lens. Um, so there are drawbacks, but these drawbacks are dramatically less for certain uses such as video production. Again, if you're an event videographer or a TV news guy, uh, you need an ENG camera with responsive autofocus. That's a totally different universe. If you're a documentary film producer, or you are producing your independent feature film where you are in control of the situation. Uh, these manual classic lenses, some of them, not all of them, some of them are real crap. Um, some of these classic lenses are better than anything made today. So th there's not an easy answer here. It's not simple. But in some cases, if you are in control of the situation, these manual classic lenses that cost anywhere between, you know, 100 to 1,000 bucks deliver higher and better optical performance than 20 or 15 or $30,000 PL mount cinema lenses. Better optics, better resolution, less distortion. And there are reasons for that, which I won't get into right now. So if you are an independent filmmaker, if you are uh, a, a documentary film producer, you are in control of the situation. A serious winning formula is mounting a classic lens to a old camera, to a, mounting a classic lens to a new camera body, such as using a classic Nikkor AIS lens with a GH2, a hack GH2 such as using a manual uh, uh, Nikkor, a classic Nikkor AI lens with a Canon 5D Mark III. Um, but that is, that's perfect. That delivers stunning results when you're in control of the situation. If you're running around trying to film baby pictures, man, manual focus is essentially useless. Your kid's running around the room I assume I don't have any, but if I did, I assume they're similar to cats, and they're running around the room, they're doing their own thing, and uh, you're not manually focusing capturing action, uh, regardless of what you read on whose blog um, uh, or forum. So, in theory, guys, I've just covered the fundamentals, the general fundamentals of lens formats. Um, you know, there are third party camera make camera lens makers like Tamron or Sigma. Uh, you know, they'll make a Canon EF mount lens uh, or a lens for a Nikon mount, but the mounts have to match up for electronic controls in modern photography. Um, and modern autofocus, guys, is great. If, if you've got some old curmudgeon, old time photographer who lives in a hole in New York City who tells you, yeah, auto fo I can't do a New York City accent. Autofocus sucks. It doesn't focus on what you want it to. Uh, nonsense. Modern autofocus is, is, is stunning. Uh, in fact, uh, one of, I think it's lensrentals.com. I think. That could be totally wrong, so don't run to that link. But one of these lens rental houses just came out with a... It was a four-part article where they... Did all ran all sorts of scientific tests, and they actually took apart camera bodies, and they examined autofocus, and they compared it to every. And they there are different kinds of autofocus if you get into the specifics. And they went through this massive project, and the conclusion of this massive product project was, and this is not a joke. They concluded after after weeks of research and scientific investigations and tearing apart camera bodies and lenses, they concluded. 
modern cameras with modern lenses autofocus faster than older cameras with older lenses. So there you go, folks. Uh, uh, if you need autofocus, which you need it sometimes, it's for certain uses you got to have it, uh, then you must match up your lens mount with your lens camera body. Got to. Uh, for situations where you are totally in control, you control the lighting, you control where the person's going to sit, you're directing the scene. Uh, for documentary film producers uh, doing interviews, and I guess I should have clarified that. If you're a documentary film producer trying to film stuff going on, that falls into the event photography or videography or filmmaking scenario or ENG, electronic news gathering. Um, in that situation, for a documentary, then you would need an ENG camera or something with response fast and responsive autofocus. Uh, when I say documentary film producer, I'm talking about uh, like in a, filming an interview, uh, filming a scene where you're going to have a voiceover, you know, th those kinds of elements. When you're in control of the situation, guys, manual classic focus lenses, especially primes, will deliver optical results on par with ten to $50,000 cinema optics, PL mount lenses. This has been proven time and time again, and it's, in fact, that is the correct. Uh, however, if you need to respond to the situation around you, manual focus lenses are useless, and you need to buy uh, lenses that match the format.